But, yeah, I mean, but other than that, you know, Bond has never shown, you know, degrading any of the women that he works with. He's never shown to, you know, try to one-up them or anything. No. He, he shows, like, great respect for all the women that he works with. I and that's really appreciative. He even and he said even says thank you a couple of times. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, he's so polite. <laughs> I mean, I've come a long way, you know, from the days of where. Uh, I don't know where Sean Connery is <laughs> slapping some girl's ass somewhere, mm -hmm. in like the first like five minutes of the movie. It's like so, get out of here. This this is a man's job. <laughs> I know, but it was a different. It was a different time. It was. The time period in which the movie was made was totally different, and you know, things were different back then. But things were, but things are a lot better. But things have gotten better now, and times have changed. And you know, and yeah, for lack of a better word, you know, the character has evolved, mm -hmm. and I think evolved for the better, in my opinion. Definitely. I mean, the guy started off as you know, basically, sort of, I sort of like the Gary Stu, I might say. You know, the Gary Stu of uh, Secret Spies, you know. He's handsome, he's strong, he's smart, he gets all the ladies, he kills all the bad guys, he's always one step ahead of everyone, but at the same time, that kind of puts him, makes him, like, sort of a misogynistic and even prejudiced bastard at times. Mm -hmm. And then you see, as times go on, he generally becomes more vulnerable, he deals with a wider range of people, and... You know, like I said, you know, he works with women and he doesn't complain about it. He respects the hell out of them, treats them just like any other agent or any other person. And and one, and the one thing, one thing I should note that I actually I found hilarious. Uh, uh, well, the first time where he meets the bad guy, and the guy's sort of like sort of trying to get into his head a bit. <laughs> the guy actually starts flirting with him. He like undoes his shirt, caressing his chest and his neck, and then he starts he rubbing his thighs. thighs. <laughs> and I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> They're actually doing this in a Bond film? And you think someone like Bond, who's like, comes off as such a manly man, would like be totally repulsed by this or something, but instead he just looks at him, he just takes it, like with a smile on his face, and he's like, you honestly think this is my first time? <laughs> and I'm like, oh! <laughs> Someone was experimental in college. <laughs> <laughs> it was the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> it was a different time, man. <laughs> it was during the Roger Moore era. No. <laughs> but the point is, like... That actually would work in the Roger Moore era. <laughs> I think about it. Yeah, but the point is, Bond has grown up. He's not yes. just that fantasy boy that every guy wants to be. He's now, like, a realistic, for the most part... A really likable and sympathetic character, and I personally love the direction they've done, both in the reboot and in the course that they've shown his involvement over the last fifty years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so, I mean, if this Skyfall was going to be the last Bond film, which I know it's not going to be, no, that, but I because think, they say James Bond will return. Of course, well, they're of planning. Course. I mean, the, with the success of this movie so far and the millions it's going to make out of here, it's it's really good. They're going to continue to keep making more for the next. You know, they're going to keep going with this, you know, mm -hmm. for the 60th, 70th, whatever. Bond is immortal! <laughs> oh, one last thing I want to discuss. Um, the song. The Bond, the James Bond song that... I like this that, one. You know how at the beginning of every movie there's always a song that, you know, sort of defines the movie, always has, like, the the title of the, mo of the movie in the song? The, the, the one in this is... Awesome. This is a, this is actually one of the better ones. One's I, a good one that I've heard in probably in a long time. Probably the last real good one I would have to say probably the world is not enough. Had a, the world's not enough had a good theme. That was the last real good one I thought uh, where the you know, the song really did stood out. Mm -hmm. I mean the other one, the last one, Dying Another, Dying Another Day was too poppy. Yeah, uh, I hate that see, one. The, 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 you know my name. You know my name from Casino Royale. It was okay. I saw what they were trying. Obviously, you could tell what you know with the lyrics what they were trying to do with that one. Uh, Quantum Solace was okay. It was better, but it was better, but a little bit more, but kind of forgettable. This one is nice. This this one this one is nice. I mean, I really don't care too much. I mean, the artists I really don't know much about, but it doesn't really ma it doesn't really matter to me. It's just it's one. Of, Bond songs is one of those things where, I mean, it's not so much who really sings it, it's just, it's more about the overall 
experience. It's the over True. It's the overall the I guess the overall uh, tonality of it mm -hmm. and how it sets up for the entire movie. I was legitimately surprised when I found out who sung the song. It's actually sung by Adele and here's the thing, I really don't like Adele. I mean I've listened to a lot of her songs and I just I don't like her pitch. Like I don't like how kind of, she kind of sounds like she's sort of whining when she sings certain songs. This I, one she actually sounded really good in this one. No, this one she sounded amazing because like, and they didn't say it right off the bat that, you know, oh, this is done by Adele. So I didn't like have any, you know, pre-notions like when I was listening to it. I didn't find it until like the very end. I'm like, holy shit, she sung this? I mean, this is amazing. And the thing that made it even better was the fact that they had amazing visuals to go with it. Yes, they've they've really done a lot. They've gotten a lot better with the, the visuals. The visuals with with every opening with a lot of the Bond movies. Um, the visuals have really, uh, I mean, they've evolved over the years. But like, the, they pretty much have like that same kind of style where it's like you have like different uh, the objects supposed to like symbolize like what you're gonna. It's kind of like a preview, like what you're gonna see in the movie. Like you see, like like the daggers turning into tombstones, or you know Bond floating, you know, in through floating in through the water, and you see, and you see like the the Chinese dragon, you know, that kind of thing. A lot of the Bond, a lot of the Bond movies, especially the ones in the set, especially the seventies Bonds, the ones with Roger Moore, they have a lot of those, and there's always like dancing women, you know, in silhouettes, you know, that kind of thing. But here, it's not so much with the dancing women in silhouettes; it's more it's more of the visuals, and the visuals really did stuck stuck out here. And they've been doing that a lot more. They've been doing that for the last few Bond movies from Casino Royale up to here. They've actually gotten a lot better with it. And I, this one was really good. Yeah, and actually, because I saw this twice, so of course I noticed this the second time around. They actually do a bit of foreshadowing in the uh, visuals. Like, yeah. They, like the, they have like these uh, sort of shadow creatures or whatever who would show up and then he would like sort of just, like shoot them and it would seem like, you know, the bullets are going right through them or he was just shooting his own reflection. Some of the characters, like, you see uh, you see the girl, the femme fatale they have in there. You actually see the bad guy at one point, you know, aiming a gun at him. And, and they even show uh, the Skyfall Mansion at one point. So like I said, it's all like a big foreshadowing that you probably wouldn't notice unless you saw it a second time. But <laughs> it's really cool. And just just the transitions they do into each one, you know, like going into someone's eye and then it's like in a graveyard and then you see like all these knives running down becoming tombstones and then you see these uh, crows going off into the sky and sort of becoming like blood rain and it's... it's just so cool! <laughs> <laughs> One point it's almost like looking through a kaleidoscope. Because like how things sort of descend into each other and like become different stuff, it's it was awesome. Yeah, a lot a lot of Bond openings have that like kaleidoscope thing. Yeah. Like I said, the Roger Moore stuff. When they got to the Roger Moore era, you know, a lot of the openings are like that had that kaleidoscopey type feel to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, and then like I said, the song's catchy as hell. I kept hearing it for days in my head after I saw the movie, and I was like. Damn it, Adele, you did it again. Get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> like that's it. That's that's the worst when you have someone you really don't care for and their voice is just stuck in your in your head. Ugh. <laughs> and you may and you wish they would do more of that. Yeah, I mean, this song gives me hope that you know she's probably that she's you know getting better, at least making stuff that I would consider good. So I think I might you know give Adele another chance, or at least you know download that song to my iTunes. <laughs> So, so overall, uh, I really liked Skyfall. I said, one of the better Bond films that I've seen in a long time, I think. Like I said, um, again, I ha have really nothing to like compare it to aside from Die Another Day, which, like I stated, that I hated. So I really can't compare it like in terms of it's the best Bond film or just a mediocre film. Um, in terms of being a film on its own, like I said, is it... I know the references, I got the references when, you know, when I saw them and everything. Uh, for me, this movie, it it was got really long at times, and it is a long movie, it's like two and a half hours, but 
And it does get a bit slow at times, but for the most part, it's really enjoyable as an action flick. And like I said, I love the character of Bond, I love the character of M, I'm in love with Q. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I like the female agent. You know, there's a lot of aspects about this I like, and mm -hmm. some things that kind of drive me up the wall, like the fact that Bond managed to survive being shot and falling off the waterfall. <laughs> but for the most part, I did enjoy this film. Like, I did not at any point think, oh god, what am I doing here? Please let this movie end soon or anything. I never thought that. And I did have fun with making fun of the few things that <laughs> that were laughable, like, you know, the Dark Knight references or the bad guy just being over the top. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so and you? Well, I like, like I said, probably one of the better Bond films I've seen in years. I mean, Bond is a lot more sympathetic. He's a lot more, he's a lot more human. Uh, the character, the way that they've updated everything, they've updated everything. You know, with Q, you know, they reintroduced Q, who we haven't seen since Die Another Day. The way they've um, the the vil uh, the villain, he's a lot more the villain. He's a lot more he's a lot more sinister, but still but still flamboyant, like some of the other previous Bond villains are. I like the I like I really like what they really like how it's all set up. Um, the cinema uh, the cinematograph the cinematography the fact that and this is the thing that's really blown my mind, the fact, and I haven't, just haven't talked about it, the fact that you can see the theme, see, like, an actual theme, like, what they're going with, like, the, the themes that they play off, like, the themes that, that really stuck with me, you know, the fact that, you know, you know, what, you know, is MI6 still relevant, is MI6 still relevant, you know, you know, do they have to fight, you know, do they have to fight in the shadows with their enemy? Do they, you know, are they too, are they getting old for this? That's the real big one. Are they getting old for this? Something that, you know, th you know, some themes that, can, that you can play off of with any movie, but with the Bond movie, I mean, a lot of the Bond movies are just, you know, simple little action flicks, you know, Bond goes in, he has to stop the bad guy, he gets the girl, and he saves the day. But here... They actually went a little bit more in depth, and that's and I've noticed that from you know, and it's gotten more and more from, ever since they rebooted with Casino Royale, and I think they're going to continue to go in this route. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm interested to see what they what they do from here because I'm. I mean, Daniel Craig's still going to be Bond. Yes, he's he's, he's going to still be Bond. All right, so. Now, I would definitely watch the next movie, like, based on what I've seen from this. And I probably will look up the first two ones with Daniel Craig as well. I mean, I might give the earlier ones a shot. You know, I mean, like, the the, the ones that, you know, don't aren't too misogynistic, because I'm pretty sure that would piss me off too much to really enjoy the movie. But I will, based on this movie, I will probably give Bond a lot more of a chance. Mm. So... Uh, so 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 for next time since we're kind of behind yeah let's see we are going to go see lincoln because mm -hmm. you know i mean we were going to see lincoln this weekend you know because the joke because you know we thought you know everyone's going to see twilight breaking dawn part <laughs> two and I'm, we're just like no to hell with that we're going to go <laughs> see no fuck that we are going to go see lincoln because i'd rather go see lincoln than twilight and i haven't seen any of the mo twilight movies not planning to and then of course we have rise of the guardians mm. which comes out this week, yes. but we're gonna. But we got time yet because the next few weeks there aren't really any any real big movies. That yeah, really I, think, my I don't think there's anything till like really Christmas. Until the Hobbit. The Hobbit, yay! The Hobbit. The Hobbit Part One. <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna. So that will be interesting. Mm -hmm. So until then, I'm Y Two Staller, and I'm Catsy Critic, and. Here's one sad morn who's invisible because he's not here. He's in spirit. Anyway. He's here in spirit, and he will be with us next time, hopefully. And until then, we bid you adieu.